Richard Plunkett finishes about 300 bulls a year on the 440 hectare family farm just north of Omaru. So 440 hectares here, um, 131 hectares dairy platform, which is nine k's away. 400 cows milking out on the dairy platform, all the dairy support and wintering of the cows takes place here. Grow fodder beet crops to winter them on. Two years ago, he went on a red meat profit partnership sponsored tour of North Island bull beef producers, and he's adapted some of the things he learned there to the different conditions on the South Island's east coast. Yeah, I always had the idea of wanting to do fixed group, but just to see how the, the North Island run them in their cell setups or the technos, um, and just yeah, brought that home and made the best of what I thought would work for, for us down here. We have our own dairy farm which is basically a Frisian herd so we rear all our calves from, from the dairy farm. I also buy another extra 100 at 100 kilos. Um, so they're just running as a big mob right through until the autumn where I split them up a bit to be wintered on fodder beet. Try not to have any greater than around that 70 mark for the winter mobs. So then once I finish the fodder beet, go back onto grass in the springtime, that's generally when I'll split that mob of 70 up again. It's easier to have them on a smaller mob. 25 to 30 bulls is ideal, I feel. Any more than that, you get that hierarchy carry on going on and then they'll come down here onto the fixed grid and they'll be then finished by the start going out in the autumn and 90% of them are gone before that second winter. So by putting the fixed grid in, we're not having to worry about shifting the K lines, which took, I suppose, three quarters of an hour just to do that alone. And then not winding reels up and down, you know, there's only 45 metre across from one fence to another compared to you know, 200 metre long electric fence. And the behaviour with the bulls in the wider, more rectangular square, yeah, square rectangular area is, is heaps better than a long narrow strip. It's just they can get away from one another and not having to walk past. Uh, you do have issues, so you'd have to take the odd one out because they just get picked on. You just have a wee odd and sob mob later on, and they do it right. The calves, well, they're pretty cruisy. They just, just go around grass paddocks. It's not a great deal of work with them until they go under the fodder beat. That's generally mid-May. The 18-month-old stuff, February, March, we start getting rid of them. I used to shift them every day, but I'm now running them on two-day breaks. But over an hour, everything's set up. It doesn't take very long at all. So at the moment, we've just started feeding out some baleage. Um, so we've, we've shortened the grass area up to, in theory, lengthen the round out. Um, and then we get into the springtime where the grass is growing vigorously, we can, we can get over a lot quicker, put them on shorter and give them more area. They will be left on there to take it down to the correct residuals that we want. So it'll be down to that 1,550, 1,600. So we'd be sitting in that 26 day round, 28. In the winter time, if we get wet, I don't want big animals. The ones I'll be wintering will be around, well, the 10% that'll be left will be around that 500K mark. So if we get a wet winter, they make a hell of a mess. I try to push mine along a lot more so they are gone that second winter. While not everything he learnt in the North Island could be applied directly to his farm, Richard did pick up enough to be confident he's on the right track with the changes he's made to his system. 